This video has been made possible by Rebus Farm, the professional render service. Hey guys and welcome back. Well, I have been asked to do a very basic entry level tutorial on Substance Painter. Okay, now I'm going to do more videos in the future and they're going to be pretty detailed on specific topics. But this one is specifically for people who have never seen Substance Painter, have no idea what it is, and are not familiar with the interface, okay? So I'm going to keep it extremely basic, uh, like I said, more detailed ones in the future. And uh, that said, let's uh, jump in and have some fun. Here we go. Okay guys, welcome to this uh, beginner's video on introducing Substance Painter. And uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through the absolute basics of how to get started, okay? So if you have any experience with Substance Painter at all, you can uh, skip this video. For those of you who are completely new and have no idea what it is and how to use it, this is for you, okay? All right, let's get started. So a substance painter, what is it and where does it come from? What does it cost and what can you do with it? Okay, well, it's a product created by Allegorithmic and uh, it is a PBR based texturing system. Okay, so PBR as in a physically uh, based rendering. So that is kind of a new thing, a trend. Uh, well, not so new anymore anyway, but it's fairly new and it is uh, focused on trying to render as realistic as possible. It uses uh, real life lighting information and tries to get um, the renderings extremely uh, realistic, okay? Now, there is a lot of discussion about the definition of PBR and what it exactly means, and there are a lot of people that explain it in a different way, but this is kind of my approach on it, okay? All right, so um, what does it cost? Okay, well, we'll check out this button here, the download and buy button. And before we get into the cost, if you are a student, you can get a one year license for free and you can renew that, okay? If not, and you are, let's say an independent or a freelance artist, you can uh, buy that here and you'd pay, I believe something around 150 bucks. 149, there you go. If you are a studio with a revenue 100K to 100 million or even above that, you will pay more. But this is where you can find the information, okay? Now, Substance Painter is often bought in combination with Substance Designer, uh, where Substance Painter is pretty much your painting software and the designer allows you to design your own textures, okay? And then you can use them in Substance Painter, all right? So now that we have that out of the way, let's uh, jump into the software. Just uh, hang on, here we go. I'll just uh, get this out of the way here, hang on. So uh, Substance Painter, there we go. We'll give it a sec. Okay. Now this is pretty much your default uh, workspace in Substance Painter. And as you can see, not so much going on for the simple reason that we have not loaded up a 3D model. Now Substance Painter is intended to uh, texture 3D models, so let's load one in. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up to File, we're gonna go to New, and here we have the option to select a mesh. As you can see, no mesh is selected. I'm gonna click on Select, and I got this very simple crate that I modeled a while back, and we're gonna hit OK on that. And then, okay, let's get that out of the way. And then we have the option to select the normal map format. Now that's important uh, depending on where your model is gonna end up at its end station. So let's say you are going to um, export your model when it's all said and done into Unity or Unreal Engine. Uh, you need to keep in mind the normal map orientation used by that game engine, okay? So you can select either OpenGL or DirectX. We're just gonna leave that. And then you have the option to select a map size. Now I'm just gonna select a 2K map size. You can change this at any time for the simple reason that uh, Substance Painter has a non-destructive workflow. That means that when you start to change and add to your model, it will all be saved as layer upon layer upon layer, and these layers are independent from the object. So you can take them out, you can change them and so forth, and nothing is definite, if you will, okay? 
And then down here, we have the option to add in maps that we have already created. So let's say I created a, uh, a normal map for my crate in a different application. I can load it in here. If I created an ambient occlusion map, a specular map and so forth, I can all add it here, but I can also do it later on, okay? So I'm not gonna add anything right now. I'm just gonna click on okay. And as we do that, we can see that the crate has now been loaded into our workspace. And I'll just zoom out a bit so you can see it. A couple of things we notice here. Well, first of all, we have a sky and a landscape, and that is used to project light on my cube. Okay. So what does that mean? That means that this is an HDRI image and it's using image based lighting to project that light onto my cube. Okay. Second, we see that the cube is rotating because I am rotating it. Okay, so how do you do that? Well, first of all, if you hold the Alt key and left click, you can move your mouse around and as such, move your object. You can hold down the Alt key and press down your scroll button, which will allow you to move it like so. And you can use your scroll button without the Alt key just to zoom in and out if you like, okay? And if you just hold the Alt button and nothing else, you will see a little list with shortcuts popping up here on the left, okay? So this is our very simple and basic cube. And then that said, let's look up here and see what we got. So we've got a menu up here where we have a paintbrush, which will allow us to paint. We have a, an eraser, so we can erase that. We're not gonna do all of these, just the ones that are uh, very important to get started. We have a material picker here, which is pretty cool. Um, in Photoshop, for example, you have a picker that will pick up a color somewhere in your image so you can use it elsewhere. But in this case, it doesn't only take the color, it takes the entire material information, including height and I mean occlusion, all that cool stuff. So that's pretty nice, okay? And then we're gonna slide over a little bit and we're gonna look at this menu right here. Now this one, you can choose to look at your 3D and 2D view. So if I select that, on the left, there's my 3D model, and on the right, there's my UV map, okay? And I can decide that I just want to see 3D or just want to see 2D, okay? Cool. So we're gonna just move our mouse over to this edge here and just drag this out a little bit. And we're gonna look at what we have going on here, okay? So we got the undo stack, um, which is uh, pretty common for most software packages. If I did something and I don't like it, I wanna go back and I hit control Z, then this list will have a bunch of things that I've done and it will go back and back and back, okay? So let's just uh, get that out of the way. Uh, let's see, our texture set, bunch of stuff going on here. We got additional maps down here and up here we have our channels. So base color, height, roughness, and metallic. Okay, and we'll get to that. And this is the size that we chose. And then the additional maps are the maps that I just had the option to select. I didn't do that. But if I wanted to, I could select normal map. It says no resources available because I didn't do that in that map just now, the additional maps that we were able to select, okay? But in this case, we're just gonna have a Substance Painter do all the work, all right? And then what's important is you have your viewer section, and let's just uh, clean that up a little bit, hang on. I just pulled this down a little bit too far, hang on one second. Yeah, there it was. It was just a hiding behind uh, this right there, okay? So our viewer settings. So what we can do, for example, is we can uh, decide to uh, make our environment dark. Okay, so, oh, this one here. So I can take the opacity. Um, I will still see my cube with all the lighting on it. I just don't want to see that sky and so forth because it's distracting or whatever, okay? And also I can decide to darken or lighten the whole thing if I like, okay? I'm not really gonna do that, but that's the option that you have here. We're just gonna push this back a little here. We'll put that right in there and then we'll take the whole thing and move it over, okay? 
So what else is important to get started? Well, we have some alpha channels here. We've got some brushes, some materials, and some smart materials, okay? And then over here, we have a bunch of default items that we can play with. And we see that we have one layer up here that we can turn on or off, okay? Now, that layer contains information on what we're doing with our cube. So if we decide to paint it and put a layer on top of it and so forth, that information will be added and stacked here. And I'll give you an example. I'll just uh, take a default brush right here. And you can see up here, that is my default brush. And this will be a default material. And I'll go into my base color down here. And we'll just take, um, I don't know, some sort of green, okay? So once we do that, you can see that I can now paint on my cube. And what I'll do is I'll just uh, go in here Close this guy out in the way and make my brush a bit bigger. Here you see this brush menu with that little uh, horizontal stripe up there. If I click on it, it becomes thicker. And if I click once again, it becomes full, okay? This gives me a lot of control and I'll move that up. And what I wanna do with my brush, I can increase the size, for example. I can change the flow. Uh, I have some jitter controls if I like. Um, for example, because uh, I want it to be a bit, I don't know what that's called. Yeah, jittery, I guess, okay? So let's put some more striping there. Let's make it even bigger, just so you know, okay? So we got all that stuff going on there. Now, just to show you how this layering works, all right? What we're gonna do is we're gonna go up here and we're gonna hit the plus key. So I now have a layer two and I'm gonna choose a different color in my brush. Where did he go? Let's do um, something red, okay? So I am now painting red on top of that green, okay? Now if I go to my layer stack, you can see that it works with layer one first and then layer two. So it's working its way up from beneath, okay? So if I move layer two down, you'll see that the green will come in front of the red. Okay, there you go. And if I want to turn this layer off, I just have to click on this eye icon here, and there you go, all right? Now, this is your stack up here. You got all these settings down here that you can tweak, right? You can tweak up here, for example, the opacity. I got this blue color right now selected, so here it says 100. Well, I'm gonna just click on that. I'm just gonna bring that down. And you can see that on my cube, the blue-green is starting to fade just by pulling that opacity slider, okay? And then also up here, I have the option to choose the blend mode, which is pretty much the same as you have in Photoshop, okay? So you can choose an overlay. We're not gonna see a lot of difference right now, but if you have, let's say, an object where that's applicable, it's uh, pretty cool, okay? So all these settings down here. Then uh, you can apply stencils if you like, again, similar to what you can do in Photoshop. And uh, what's really important to know is the choice between materials and smart materials, okay? So what we'll do is we'll go to File and New, discard everything, and just reload our cube leave everything as is. So we've got a brand new fresh scene here. If I wanted to select a smart material, for example, I'll just click here, take a material, click on it, and just drop it in there, okay? Now you can see that it's applied, and uh, the difference between regular materials and um, smart materials is a regular material is something that you can apply with a brush let's say a wood texture or so. A smart material is a combination of layers where, for example, you have scratches, you have dirt, you have rust and all that kind of stuff. It's all stacked together. And every level of detail here can be turned on or off or altered, okay? So hopefully that is enough information for you to get started. Again, it's by no means a full tutorial. You have a bunch of tutorials online 
telling you exactly how to do each and every feature. But uh, that said, um, hopefully this will get you started just so you're a little bit more comfortable with the interface and uh, jump in and have some fun. Okay, see you guys next time. Bye.